They don't do that in the mic. Oh. Can you do that again? <laughs> Today on Homes and Lifestyles, Anna Cummings with another antidote. Apis Home Inspector talks fire alarm safety. Jeff Kahane talks about picking the right real estate lawyer. Our panel talks about winter health and home safety. Also on Homes and Lifestyles. We have a great home tour for you. Sponsored by Kahane Law, Hayworth. Good morning and welcome to Homes and Lifestyles Canada. I'm Kim Hayden, veteran agent and your host. Today we're going to be talking all about preparing for winter. How do you prepare your home? How do you prepare yourself? So can you have a safe and happy season? We'll be joined by Carol Hankey, Public Information Officer with the Calgary Fire Department, as well as Adam Laurie, take a look at the foot chin, super cute, <laughs> Public Education Officer with EMS Alberta Health Services. But first, let's check in with our agents and visit a beautiful home. Hello, my name is Deandra Malenica. With over 5,600 square feet of developed living space, 159 Cove Close is majestically situated on the north end of Chestmere Lake backing onto a park with tennis and basketball courts, a sandy beach, and a pathway system that goes around the cove. Come on in. This home is custom crafted with elegant details, such as coffered ceilings, stone walls that match the exterior stonework, and wainscoting throughout. This dream kitchen has gorgeous granite countertops, extensive custom cabinetry, two separate copper sink stations, a Wolf gas stove with six burners, a wine fridge, and a Sub-Zero fridge with matching cabinet door. There's a Mila coffee station for the coffee connoisseur, and the double-sided stone fireplace adds ambiance to the kitchen and main living space. You'll never run out of storage space as the extensive custom cabinetry continues through the back entrance, laundry with sink, and this 25-foot pantry with floor-to-ceiling shelving. This gorgeous master retreat has a spa-like ensuite with tile, granite, and stone finishes, a large walk-in closet, its own separate laundry, and you can enjoy your morning coffee from your private sitting room or balcony with lake views. Perfectly postured for an at-home business, this bonus room has its own powder room and access through the interior by stairs and by elevator. It has exterior access through stairs down to the main level office. Currently being used as a music room, it is designed to hold the weight of 75 people and two grand pianos, and it is completely soundproof. The home gym has a built-in entertainment unit, and you can finish your workout in the private bath with steam shower. The massive walkout basement is almost entirely rec space, complete with a wet bar, wine cellar, and of course, expansive lake and park views. The city of Chestmere is a recreational oasis just five minutes from the east edge of Calgary and just 25 minutes to the downtown core. In the last decade, this small town has grown into a self-sufficient city with full services and amenities while maintaining its friendly community feel. I have been a realtor since 2011 and in 2014 I joined forces with my mother, a longtime top realtor and Chestmere resident specialist since 1998. Together, we are the award-winning team of Watson & Associates with CIR Realty, which is the number one selling brokerage in both Central and Southern Alberta. While we specialize in Chestmere, it's our pleasure to serve clients in all communities of Calgary and the surrounding areas. We are proud to support CIR Realty's One for All program in support of ARCS and the Ronald McDonald House Charities. More to come with our weekly design, Anna Dote with Anna Cummings. Hi, I'm Anna Cummings of ANA Interiors and today I'm talking about where to splurge and where to save in your dining room. A dining room is an important place in your home, whether you like to entertain, host family gatherings or use on a daily basis. Places where I would definitely splurge are things that your body comes into contact for long periods of time. Fabric technology has come such a long way now. You can put practically any fabric on a chair and have it impervious to stains or spills. This is called Krypton, Alta, or Nanotex. The next area that I would definitely splurge on is your table. 
it's going to see a lot of action, so you want to make sure you're doing your research and find a table that suits your dining room's function, style, and budget. After you select your dining table and chairs, the next key important factor is your lighting. Take a look at this antique chandelier. It came from a castle in France. Lighting is a great way to showcase your personal style. You can be as frugal or as spendy as you like. There are so many chandeliers that are similar looking that range from $300 to over $3,000. Places where you can save, if you want, would be items that add a rich layered look. For example, anything that is on your table or decor. Your walls, I love to add color and wallpaper. And I always do a dining room with art. Speaking of preparing our home, let's check in with one of our APHIS home inspectors. My name is Taryn Dada, and I'm an APHIS certified home inspector with Just Inspector Inc. at Calgary. Every year, people die because either their smoke and carbon monoxide detector didn't go off during a fire, or they did not have one installed at the correct location. The main reasons for this are, either the battery was dead, missing, or the alarm was past its life expectancy. Therefore, we recommend changing out the batteries every year and the alarms out every 10 years. Also, once a month, gently vacuum out your alarms to prevent dirt from blocking the sensor and press that test button to make sure that your alarms are working well. There are two types of smoke detectors, ionization types for fast moving flame fires and the photoelectric types for slow smoldering fires. Choose and install the correct type preferably with a built-in carbon monoxide sensor, and make sure you place at least one alarm at each level as per your local regulations. Finally, develop and practice an escape plan with the family so that everyone knows what to do when that alarm goes off. You do not want to end up with a memory like this one. Thanks and be safe. In the words of British poet Edith Sitwell, winter is a time for comfort, for good food and warmth, for the touch of a friendly hand and for talk beside the fire. It's a time for home. So each year, Calgary 911 answers more than one million emergency calls and non-emergency calls, making it one of the largest public safety uh, answering points in Canada. Here today to talk about safety are Carol Hankey from the fire department and Adam Loria from EMS. So how do they work together? Because we just pick up the phone, right? We say what our issue is. How does all that work? Well, I think our agencies attend a lot of emergencies together. I mean, take a motor vehicle collision, for example. So we extricate, but medical intervention is also required. CPS is also required to handle the traffic or do an investigation. So there are many calls that we all work together. House fire, you know, EMS is there to support any patients that, that need care or transport to hospitals. Obviously, we're putting out the fire. CPS is blocking off roads so that we can do our work unimpeded. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, when you call one, like you said, uh, the call takers and dispatchers do a great job of determining what the emergency is and, and who needs to, to respond. And, and like Carol mentioned, sometimes there's incidents where all three services need to respond. So EMS, fire, uh, and the police service or law enforcement. And there's some situations where our agencies just respond by themselves. Maybe it's just one or two together. So it all kind of depends. But as Carol mentioned, uh, we, we, uh, we train and, and work together on a daily basis during exercises. And when it's a real life emergency, we all uh, work seamlessly. That, you know, and I am fortunate. I've never had to have fire or, or any of those types of emergencies. However, I've had clients, I've had friends who have required, and it's amazing how fast you guys are. So I'd like to ask, what are the most common issues that you address? So for the fire department, actually approximately half of our call volume is critical medical interventions. But that being said, we attend over 60,000 calls a year, so over 30,000 are a wide variety of other types of calls, ranging from fires, rescues, people and animals, and anywhere someone needs help. When people call 911, we show up and we try and make it better. 
What about you, Adam? Well, <clears throat> a little different from City of Calgary Fire and, and Police. We're a provincial service, so I speak a little bit more broader terms. So in Calgary and area, we, we respond to about uh, 160,000, give or take, uh, annually calls, emergency calls annually. Uh, and really for us, um, it's, the, uh, it, it's the breathing problems whether that be asthma, COPD, or any type of other, uh, maybe allergic reaction, and as well, uh, 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 chest discomfort or chest pain calls. Uh, as well, uh, you can throw in a, a sprinkle of traumatic emergency, so uh, falls, uh, soft tissue type injuries. So those are, uh, just to name a few of our, our top, uh, but um, like I said, as, as the other agencies could attest to, we respond to really, well, well quite frankly, uh, literally anything under the, whatever happens, we're, we're going to, but those are sort of our, our top, uh, top three. So. Uh, it, with going into Christmas, I always have heard about, you know, Christmas trees causing challenges and stuff. Is there anything that you can share with us, some points from, uh, key points from the fire prevention that we can utilize forward? Well, our, our first message is always to try and prevent fires yeah. to begin with, right? But that being said, we're not always successful in that and things happen because we're all human. Having a working smoke alarm really is the key. That is what's gonna let you know there's an issue in your home. And uh, this year's theme for Fire Prevention Week was every second counts plan two ways out. We don't want people to linger in the house. You need to get out quickly and safely. And it just takes sometimes a couple of breaths of house fire smoke to render you incapable of, of making your way out safely. So fires these days, especially in new builds, new homes, they spread very, very quickly. They can double in size in 30 to 60 seconds. So you have wow. less than, once your smoke alarm activates, you literally have less than three minutes to get out safely before you're probably unable to do so. And if you have a, a larger family, you have small children, those are all things that uh, you need to consider and, and plan and for. Move fast, Yes. move fast. So uh, what should homeowners do to prepare their homes for winter? So we've, we've gone through that. So how do we apply some of the EMS and some of the fire safety to our homes for, for the winter months? Well, definitely salt and sand mixtures. Um, uh, spread those on any, uh, any icy spots uh, to prevent any yeah. slips and falls. And, and getting back to that snow shoveling where we, where we see a small uptick in uh, cardiac related emergencies yeah. or respiratory emergencies. We also see the slips and falls, right? And on top of that salt sand mixture, um, help your neighbors out, do the same thing. Uh, and, and we also got to take a little bit of responsibility. Be prepared when we go out. If we're, if we're commuting to the bus stop or going for a walk or commuting to work, uh, be prepared. So have proper footwear on, right? Yes. Uh, something with a good durable uh, anti-slip sole, good ankle support. Uh, if you find yourself in a, in, a, in a slippery area, we advise walk like a penguin. I don't know if you've ever seen a <laughs> penguin slip. Right, uh, uh, so nice and slow, hands free, put the cell phones away, uh, hands free in case you do have to fall. So nice and slow, legs apart, and uh, just small uh, shovel steps, quite frankly. And, and as funny as it sounds, it actually does work. It does work, Absolutely. so walk like a I would penguin. like to see a demonstration though, because yes, I'm not actually, sure that and, I and quite. While we get you up to do the penguin thing, sure. can you also, you had mentioned earlier about being hydrated. Yep and ensure that you, you stretch, you're prepared for Absolutely. shoveling. And yep. we need to be prepared. We have such a gorgeous summer. I'm only guessing we're gonna have a really long, crappy winter. So um, can we also get you to show us a few? Uh, sure, so absolutely. Show us the walk like the penguin. I, this is awesome. So the walk like a penguin, like I said, uh, <laughs> your feet about shoulder shoulder length apart, or shoulder width apart, uh, hands free and to your sides, and just some small shuffle steps okay. in front of you. Now I want you to go all the way around. Okay. okay. That's, that's, uh, how I yeah. doing you're far. doing good, Not you're bad. doing good, arms out. Head up, looking, and uh, just take it slowly but surely, quite frankly. Okay. And, 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 and all joking aside, it's, it's the proper footwear that, that comes into play. Don't sit down yet. Now you With heels or, or dress shoes, it's probably going to yeah. still be a little bit tricky, even yeah. walking like a penguin. <laughs> even walking like a penguin. Okay, so stretching. Yeah, and, and we're not looking for anything elaborate here. I mean, just, uh, specifically this, this is targeted to people who maybe don't live a very active lifestyle or a little bit unhealthy. You want to want, <laughs> always want that stretching, so a little bit of arm, arm action here. Um, twisting motion with your back. And again, if you feel any pain at all, yeah. stop. Uh, and then just maybe try to keep your legs uh, a little bit rigid or, or, or straight and just, just stretch that back a little bit, nothing too extensive. Yeah. And then just a little bit of light stretching for your legs. And like I said, this is nothing elaborate. 
uh, just some simple, simple things to, to get you, you going. Do that without holding on to anything. I like have to hold Practice on to something perfect. and have somebody hold on to me in order to stretch <laughs> like that. Now, is there a checklist of some other activities that we should be following during the winter month just to, to ensure home safety and personal safety? So with we attend a lot of chimney fires in the winter time because people are getting their fireplace going. Yes. Make sure that those are being regularly cleaned and maintained and inspected. Furnaces, hot water tanks, those things need to be inspected on an annual basis because they can be the source of carbon monoxide building up in your home, which is colorless, odorless, tasteless, non-irritating. So you won't know it's there unless you have a working carbon monoxide alarm that alerts you to that. Those just plug in too. Yep. They don't have to be hardwired in or anything, correct? No, you can get plug-in ones. We recommend one that has a digital readout. So if it goes into alarm, you can see what the parts per million is. So having yeah. a working carbon monoxide alarm, and we recommend one on every level. And if you can just have one, it needs to be in your sleeping area so that you can hear it activate. A lot of people think, oh, I'll put it down in the furnace room because that's where the so likely source might be. Yeah. But if you live in a two-story house and you've got the alarm down in the furnace room, how likely are you to hear it upstairs? when you're sleeping. So point. really, yeah. really important to have it close to your sleeping area. That, that is a great point. You guys bring up so much. Boy, it's amazing my kids made it to adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Kahane of Kahane Law Office and I'm here to share legal insights for you to have a happier real estate closing. Today, I wanna to talk about how to pick a real estate lawyer. And no, I'm not just gonna say, call me. You wanna make sure when you're picking a real estate lawyer that you pick someone who's experienced in real estate law. With any industry, the more experience you have, the better you're gonna be at your job, and it's good not to pick a dabbler. You want someone who's experienced and can give you good quality service. Next, understand what you're paying. Legal fees are usually made up of legal fees and disbursements, but people don't know what disbursements are. Get a flat rate, because your lawyer should be able to determine what you're gonna pay in advance, and then you commit to that person. Last, you wanna make sure that you see how long does it take a lawyer to call you back when you're trying to give them work. When you're giving someone work, you expect them to call you back right away, and if it's taking two or three or four days, if you save $50, it's probably not worth it because if your possession day comes along and there's a problem, you need to be able to get a hold of your lawyer so that you can deal with the issue and make sure that you get possession on time. It's so important, if you wanna have a good experience, have that ability to communicate with your lawyer so that you have a closing that runs smoothly for you and your family. Well, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas down here at Granary Road, one of Alberta's amazing treats for the families out there. You know what, myself, my family, we love it here. It's just south of Calgary. My good friends will treat you to an amazing time and family memories that you'll never, ever forget. Shake that feed bucket, this is awesome. <laughs> the inaugural event is packed with some awesome family fun including a petting zoo that lets you get up close with some cute and cuddly barnyard critters. The festival-like atmosphere includes games and face painting, but for a unique experience, head over to the mistletoe. That's where you'll find a couple of amorous alpacas named Rascal and Caruso. They're available for photo ops every weekend through to the 23rd. Well, I'm off. I'm going on a hayride out here at Granary Road, back to the studio. Enjoy the rest of the show. I'm going to go enjoy the park. Okay, my way. Beep. Get staged, get sold, design staging tips. Hello, I'm Sean Burstein and my company at Design. Design provides professional staging services to assist in the marketing and sale of residential properties. Staging involves the placement of furniture and decor into a given space to help visually enhance its appearance. Today we'll focus on how to be eclectic and liven up a family or living room. You can see by the addition of some key elements of toss cushions, candle holders, vases, and an area rug, how you can add character and enhance the look of any living room or family room. We are now going to provide you an alternate look for what we have created in this area. So you can see by the introduction of some different accessories, 
ornamental pieces and color variations within the toss cushions and the area rug, how you can reinterpret the look of an area. So what should someone do um, if they have an incident while clearing the snow or, you know, walking or anything like that? So we've talked about how to do it. Mm -hmm. What should they do if they don't do the penguin walk and they do go yeah, down? Yeah, good, good question. Uh, if, if you're in an area you're unfamiliar with, for example, a park or you're on a leisurely stroll, what have you, look at where you are. Landmarks kind of have a general area, a description or, or location of where, where, you're, where, you're, where you're at. Uh, we work, um, all three agencies work closely with the dispatch centre to, to, to find people, uh, you know, whether they slip and fall in a, in a Fish Creek Park or Nose Hill. Uh, it may take a few extra minutes just because, again, we have a larger area to, to, to scan, but uh, if you can see a building, a, a set of trees, a, a sign of sorts, let dispatch know they'll relay that to us and we'll do our best to get there as soon as we can. Excellent, excellent. So, you know, any other signs, anything else that is applicable to kind of the season we're coming into that you would want to share with our, our viewers that, you know, they need to be aware of? So, focusing again on fires, because that's my sort of area yeah. of expertise, we still see so many fires starting by the improper disposal of smoking materials. People still think when they go outside to smoke that they can put their cigarettes in planter pots yeah. or in the flower beds. Do not, do not ever do that because it's got organic material in it. Yeah. It's soil, somehow people think it's like sand and nothing will burn but it can smolder for hours and even in the winter time. Even in the winter time, yeah. we see fires start, and they and are so dangerous because they start on the outside of the home and work their way in. And we've been so dry. Mm -hmm. We've been so yeah. dry for, I mean, we're seeing fires all over North America, so yeah. let's just not tempt fate, eh? Yeah. And don't be concerned if, it, if the fire alarm is actually going off because dinner's going. I, the fire alarm, they call the dinner bell when my kids are growing <laughs> up, so it's like, oh, good, mom made dinner. <laughs> might be a little burnt, but uh, yeah, so the... Th Getting back to smoke alarms, there are there are maintenance guidelines for smoke alarms. Mm -hmm. We want people to test them once a month, just once by pushing the test button, not by burning supper, okay? <laughs> pushing the test button. And then once a year, if it's a battery operated one, change the batteries. Or more frequently, you know, there's that annoying beep that they make mm -hmm. when, when the battery's running low, so then change it. And after 10 years, smoke alarms are no good. So the expiry oh. date is 10 years from the manufacturer date. So make sure you check your smoke alarms. If they're older than 10 years, they need to be replaced. Okay. And so now our recommendation is have one on every level, both inside and outside the sleeping areas, and they should be interconnected if you can do that. You can get battery operated ones that can talk to each other up to 12 or more on, on one circuit. So I think that's one, what we, we have in our house, but I haven't figured out how to get it from French to English. Ooh. So she yells at me. So I guess you I just have dinner. to learn French. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if they're interconnected, that means if one activates in the basement, it's going to send a message all to way. all the yeah. other ones, so all of them will go into alarm, and that way your family will hear that there's a situation much sooner than if the fire builds and then has to activate the Absolutely. Subsequent Absolutely. You're over there. Go yeah, no, I got something. I got something. Yeah, what do you got? Just out? on top of uh, Carol's points, but we, we see an uptake and obviously as you spoke about snow shoveling when it's heavier type uh, snow, uh, slips and falls, but as well cold related emergencies. And this is more getting into the middle of winter-ish when those the temperatures are really dropping. Uh, hypothermia and um, frostbite. I could talk for hours about each, but I won't get into it, but uh, do some education research about that. It happens almost daily when it's very cold. We respond to either workplaces or private residents or what have you for people experiencing hypothermia or um, frostbite. Uh, as well, uh, when the roads turn icy and snowy, yeah. um, we respond to a number of collisions. And, mm -hmm. and um, in a large majority of the circumstances, they're, they're fairly minor. They don't result in serious or, or life-threatening or critical injuries, but they do result in, in people being taken to the hospital. So uh, ensure your vehicle is prepared for winter, yeah. and I'll let you determine uh, research that as well, but uh, ensure that, and um, don't fall so close to each other. Yes. I mean, you need, with, with, with snow and ice, you need at least four to five, if not more, seconds traveling and stopping distance between yourself and the vehicle in front of you. Absolutely. Uh, we're not driving on pavement anymore when we're in December, January, February, or even March. <laughs> uh, and I don't want to 
expand that anymore in yeah. Calgary because we could go more on either way. But anyhow, uh, and and drive to the to the rules of the road as well. I mean, we should never ever, no matter when it is, exceed the post speed limit. But if it's not safe to be even going the posted speed limit, maybe drop your speed down a little bit when it's safe to do so, obviously. And um, you know, give that 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 stopping and traveling distance between yourself and the vehicle in front of you and hopefully that'll mitigate some of the, the the minor crashes that all three services respond to and don't rubberneck don't rubberneck the rubbernecking yeah. is the the biggest issue i see the the crashes are smaller and then you always get another fender bender somewhere because somebody's mm -hmm. looking at or, what just happened or nowadays in today's world everyone's Oh. trying to video or take photos mm -hmm. while they're trying to um, operate their motor vehicle. So that should be a no-no at any time. Put those yeah. phones in the trunk or in the back seat. Yeah. And if you really need to, pull over and, and use your phone. Yeah, but be careful. Be careful, absolutely. So uh, where can our viewers find more information? Is there a website that they can go to to get more information on these subjects that you've talked about? Like. Is, does EMS have yeah, HS HS.C slash EMS is, is our web page and then obviously oh, we have TC. social media so Twitter and, and, and Facebook and Instagram and all that sort of jazz. So HS.C slash EMS is, is your main main hub. And uh, www.calgary.ca slash fire. And fire. you'll find all sorts of great information on there. Not just about fire prevention, but the services that we provide to citizens in an emergency and non-emergency capacity. Excellent. You know, it, just having that, that access to information. I thank you both so much. So, you know, we want to thank Carol and Adam for coming out, talking to us today. Um, be sure to go to homesandlifestyles.ca to see more information and to see the full panel discussion. Check out our social media for tidbits and giveaways. And uh, thank you so much. Have you ever noticed this classic red brick building on 9th Avenue in Inglewood? The top floor abruptly switches to modern style, which is only fitting. We feature contemporary art, uh, international, uh, national and local artists. Esker Foundation is the largest privately funded non-commercial art gallery in Calgary. Established in 2012 by Jim and Susan Hill, they chose not to use their own name for the foundation, instead going with more of a metaphor. Esker is named after a geological feature in glaciers and rivers, which is the buildup of sediment that changes over time. Our roof is in the shape of uh, the curve of an Esker. There are 11,000 square meters of commercial space on the three floors below the gallery. Rents from these mean a steady stream of revenue, so the gallery doesn't have to worry about fundraising or applying for grants. Instead, it can focus on the art. Contemporary is about the art of our times, which is, uh, it revolves around the issues of today, uh, the issues that affect us in our daily lives. Our main mission, as it were, is, is to present the very best of contemporary art and uh, provide that to Calgarians. All of the exhibitions and, the, and over 30 programs that we, that we provide are all uh, provided completely free of charge to allow accessibility for, for everybody. Not only is Esker Foundation free of charge to visit, they also offer complimentary parking. Esker Foundation is open every day of the week except Mondays. It's also open evenings, Thursdays and Fridays. With your eCalgary update, I'm Tiffany Burns. All right, we're here. Show Home Furniture, Sunridge Mall. Shana, what's up? Okay, we are announcing the details for the contest. We are going to be giving away this lovely nest chair valued at $14.99. You can pick it in any color of fabric you want. We have 200 to choose from. It's made in Canada and you can get it. And it's <laughs> perfect for cuddling. So be sure to visit us at our Facebook page, homesandlifestyles.ca, and we will give you all the details. We will be picking the winner in one week. So rush over to our Facebook page. We love you guys. Homes and Lifestyles is shot on location at Hayworth. Hair and makeup by Swizzle Sticks Salon Spa. Wardrobe by SB Experience. A big thank you to our sponsors and supporters. Kahane Law, Hayworth, A&A Interiors, Canada Mortgage Direct, AFEST, and Design.